So Battlefield 2042 Update 3 is arriving tomorrow on December the 2nd. I did not expect that. I thought it was going to take at least another week to get this update out. But it's great to see DICE push this one out. And with it are a bunch of fixes. And apparently there's actually going to be another smaller update coming later in December. Even though it still says early December if you let me find it. Come down here to what's next. Expect one more small update focused on further balance changes and general bug fixes to further enhance your gameplay experience. So there'll be another patch coming later in December. But today is all about update three. I've got all the patch notes here on the screen. We're going to go through them all now, or at least we're going to go through the ones that I think should be highlighted so you know something important has been fixed. We'll start off with what's new coming to Battlefield 2042. Weekly missions will be activated in the week following update three. There will be three different missions that you can attempt each week via the main menu trackable. And then when you complete the mission, you'll be rewarded with player XP. And if you finish all three, you'll get a unique cosmetic reward. And I'm assuming that means that you can't then earn that reward again for another weekly mission, which would be pull. I think in previous Battlefield games, we only ever got rewarded for player XP with the weekly reward. So to see a cosmetic reward, that's a good step forwards. And I think it'll incentivize people to complete those missions. Then in Portal, they're adding the rush mode layout on all out warfare maps. That's pretty awesome. They're also adding several new templates to the builder, a new custom game mode called Vehicle Team Deathmatch, which allows you to utilize combat vehicles in custom experiences, something you couldn't do before. And also there will be more logic created in the rules editor that will allow players to do even more with their custom games. And then lastly, another new option in the logic editor that checks for the source of fatal damage to a player, and that will open up tons of new possibilities so that when someone dies, you could make some kind of mutation and something cool could happen based on how they died which is something you couldn't do before. Then for quality of life, we're introducing several improvements within the collection screen menus to make customizing your loadout and plus menu easier. In short, less clicking around. Thank goodness, Dice. All of our controllers and mouse and keyboard will now survive longer because we don't have to click as much. It's now easier to understand which attachments are locked, in use, equipable, or newly unlocked within your collection. Great step forward. UI elements during gameplay have also received enhancements. You'll notice increased visibility and reduced clutter through, for example, player world icons now scaling with distance. So this means all of those icons like flag icons or little gadget icons or friendly player icons in the distance, they will now scale to smaller when they're further away and they'll be bigger when they're close up. I don't think they're going to get any bigger than they are already. It just means as they go further away, they will get smaller. And there will also be identify friend or fro marker improvements and indicators for nearby players who can be revived or are being revived by or who is low on ammo and health. So you can see the different states of the soldiers around you, which is good news. And lastly, smoother transitioning between game menus, the options menu and matchmaking. So that's what's new that's coming in Battlefield 2042 Update 3. But there are so many more things that we can go through and I just want to make sure that we cover as much as possible. So starting things off, this one here caught my eye. Correct field of view is applied immediately following insertion sequences. Good update because the amount of times you would spawn into a 2042 server, you'd go into that transition where you're like in a condor or in a hovercraft and then you go into actual gameplay and your FOV is back at like 60 or 55 or whatever and you have to switch weapons to get the FOV to switch back. That's been fixed. Good step forwards. There are a bunch of graphical rendering fixes here in the patch notes. Uh, one thing you will notice is there's no general response to the performance issues that the game is experiencing at the moment. DICE did say last week when they were talking about update 3 early on that this isn't something they're going to be able to address immediately in these initial updates and it's going to be something that's going to take a little bit longer. That is disappointing to hear because performance in 2042, especially the 128 player modes, break through when it gets really hectic and loads of things are happening at once performance is absolutely terrible i've got to be honest and on pc it seems to be more of a problem because i think pc players expect a higher level of performance than those players on console and that's no disrespect to players on console but if the game hits 60 fps most people are only playing with a 60 hertz screen so they can only see those 60 frames anyway and of course we know most games are targeting 4k 60 fps on pc we expect higher fps than that because that's been the standard for like 10 years going up to 120 FPS, 144, and more recently, 240 Hertz, which is 240 FPS. No one expects to get 240 FPS, but they expect better performance than what they're getting. And my rig at the moment, you know, 11900K OC, 32 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 3090, it's an absolutely killer machine. And it drops down into the mid 50s when I'm playing Breakthrough. 
that's not and it's not stable it can go all the way up to like 95 100 in those lower lower action areas but when things get really intense the fps is dropping down into the 50s previous battlefield games i was able to run no problem at like 120 30 40 fps it's mental how bad the performance is in 2042 so there's nothing in the patch for it here but there will be more coming in the future so hopefully maybe in some of the patches in the new year we'll get some performance updates but we just have to wait for more information i guess then DICE mentions over 150 individual fixes, small changes and improvements across our maps, improved level geometry issues across all levels, addressing issues such as players getting snagged or trapped on things, good, resolved multiple spawning issues, visual glitches such as lens flare, resolved a large number of collision and placement issues, and effect addressed issues affecting local audio placement in multiple maps. This might be part of the reason why I think the audio isn't very good in 2042. If the local audio placement, local meaning the audio sound, like where the sources are compared to where you are on the map, if there were issues with that, with things not playing properly, that might have affected the overall audio quality. So if that has addressed some of those problems, that's great. But I still think we need to see larger audio steps forward for 2042. The audio isn't particularly brilliant. Then we've got additions to Battlefield Portal. Obviously, I mentioned the Rush game mode coming to 2042 all-out warfare maps. That's good. The new official vehicle team deathmatch game mode, new official team and free-for-all gunmaster templates. So you won't have to make your own gunmaster modes anymore. Those have been added. That's awesome. And an infection template is being added. So you won't have to create any of those yourself. You'll just pick the template and you can make a bunch of changes from there. That way you don't have to spend 20, 30 minutes making the base mode and you can just make changes. Then there are some rule editors in there. There's some fixes for Battlefield 1942, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. If people are playing lots of Portal at the moment, if, if you're one of those people, I know there are a lot out there. These are the kind of fixes that I'm sure will make the game better for you. The one that I have noticed, I've been playing quite a bit of Bad Company 2 Rush. The, the M416 reload animation feels really strange. So if they've improved that animation, that's good. Then there are some user experience improvements, made a series of visual, audio, and gameplay improvements to weapons, vehicles, and gadgets. It doesn't really break out what those changes are. I'd love to know what they actually are because that would be really nice. Improve the plus menu customization experience. We spoke about that a little bit earlier on. There's a bunch of extra stuff in here. The UX overall, like once you're in that plus menu, the amount of clicks you have to do was just absolutely mental. So the fact they are making changes there is a good step forwards. Then we move on to game modes. Conquest, tuned information spamming in Conquest, reducing the amount of messages that appear in the world log. In particular, we reduce messages about flag state changes so that they're not as distracting. Good change. I will be honest, I'm not playing much Conquest though. I'm playing Breakthrough. So these are the kind of things that are interesting to me. Um, tune the capture times for Breakthrough. Have you tuned them to make them longer or to make them shorter? I'm not 100% sure. So they've made a change, but they've not told us what the change is. That'll be interesting to see tomorrow. Uh, out of bounds defender spawning thank god they've been able to change that the amount of times i've spawned out of bounds is a bit ridiculous made improvements to the breakthrough ui to enable better tracking round progress in the form of a game mode widget and the game mode widget inside the scoreboard has been updated to put emphasis on sectors and attackers reinforcements so that's a good change i do find that when i'm playing breakthrough the ui is not particularly helpful and i have to open the scoreboard to know whether i've got a, an objective captured or whether we need to go and capture it from the enemy so if they're adding a game mode widget into the front end HUD so that it's on the screen at all times, that's great. There's also going to be a pulsating effect added to the Team 1 attacker score and the progress bar when the tickets are less than 25% of their initial tickets. And I guess that's just to put emphasis on the fact that you're running out of tickets and you need to try and take those objectives and move forward into the next sector. So those are good breakthrough fixes overall. What I don't see here is taking flags off of the roof of certain sectors. DICE has said they are looking at this, and I know that just taking the flag off and putting it somewhere, it's not as easy as that. They have to make sure that the flag is in a position that it can be fought for in a better way. Although the fact they were on the roof means that it, I, I don't understand why they were ever put on the roof. I, I can't understand why that's the case. But the fact they are thinking about changing that is good. It's just not coming in update three, unfortunately. Then moving on to the HUD, some good changes here. Added a UI element that shows nearby players that can revive you within 50 meters when downed. That's great. That's something about medics being around you and knowing when you can be revived. And then also adding a UI element that shows incoming revivers when downed and pinged by a player that intends to revive you. These were added in Battlefield 1 and I think it was available at launch for Battlefield 5. Not available at launch for 2042. Will now be here with update 3. That's great. When low on ammo or health, nearby friendly players within 50 meters will now show a resource icon above their head, 
indicating that they can provide you with health or ammo. That's not the same as the Battlefield 5 system where you could run up to an, an, a, a support player or you could run up to a medic and you could take ammo or heals off of them. This is just saying that an icon will appear above a player's head who can provide you with that with that stuff that you need. It's a big difference. It was a really cool feature in Battlefield 5. I didn't have to do a little dance in front of a medic or in front of a support player and ask for heals or ask for ammo. I could just run over to them and grab it off them and then run off and do my own thing again. Or I could go back to my squad if my squad weren't rolling with the certain the characters that we needed. So it would be good if that feature could come back. Something really nice, all player world icons now scale over distance, making them smaller when far away in an effort to reduce icons cluttering on the screen. This is something that, again, was available in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 at launch, not available in 2042, but it is now available as of update 3. Nice is adding the ability to see the fire mode indicator on the HUD at all times. This is something that at the moment, when you're aiming down the site, you will see the fire mode indicator appear in the bottom right hand corner. But then when you come out of ADS, it disappears. Not particularly helpful. So the fact there's now going to be option for you to be able to see it at all times and it will be set to be on by default is a good move. You can, of course, turn it off in the options. The option will be called fire mode indicator. So if you want it turned off, you can turn it off again. Then moving on to audio, improved reliability of various ability sounds when off screen, such as reviving, the ballistic shield, flares, wingsuit. Spoke about this in a previous video. This seems to be that there were some problems with audio when you're not looking at something, but you're within the range to be able to hear an audio element of something happening, but you're not looking at it. It seems that the reliability of those, those bits of audio was not that great. So things like, you know, <laughs> having a sun dance come down behind you and their wingsuit unfolding and you not being able to hear it and then they kill you from behind, super frustrating. So if they've been able to fix that, then that would be a great improvement. Improved weapon audio for enemies firing at the player, including at a distance. This seems to be that sometimes you take damage from a player, but you couldn't hear the gunshots being fired because there was something wrong with the mix. If that's been fixed again, that will be a good thing. It's now easier to hear the LCAA hovercraft when it's behind players. Woohoo! Dice cranked the volume of the hovercraft and I won't have to play this anymore. I added that to my microphone <laughs> so that people could hear it when I was streaming. If I ever got killed by it, I'd just play that. And so I won't have to do that anymore. I can take it off my microphone. There are now a bunch of fixes for all the different specialists. There's stuff for Angel's loadout crate here. There's some visual polish being added on destruction and despawning of the crate. There will now be a white outline around players that require armor to indicate the magnetism that will activate when you throw armor at that outline player. So at least you know where the um, armor plate is going. There will be use of the loadout crate. You can now scroll to have more than four different loadouts available. So if you've got all eight available in the game and you've created eight, you'll be now able to scroll through all of those. Added the ability to self-apply armor with Angel's supply bag, which is great. At the moment, you have to sort of throw the armor on the ground and then run over it and wait for it to apply. So if you can now auto-apply that, that would be awesome. And there's going to be a unique sound when you pick up armor as well. Then moving on to Irish, the biggest fix here is the improved reliability of the deployable covers, deployable placement, allowing placement on more angled surfaces. Lots of deployable placement, deployable... Yeah, basically, it just means that you can put Irish's shield down in places that you couldn't before. Awesome. There's been a slight buff to the Cyber Warfare suite available to Rao. Rao is now going to be able to have like a little grace period when he's trying to hack somebody. So let's say you're trying to like hack a helicopter and it goes behind a wall and you were just about to finish the hack. There will now be a grace period where it goes behind cover. And if you're close to the end, the game will just let you finish that hack because obviously you're that far away and it takes a little while to do it. So it's fair enough that there's a little short grace period there. And there's going to be an issue fix where the Cyber Warfare Suite would trigger enemy hacked voiceover without eligible enemies being present. So that's another good fix. The EMG X scanner for Pike added a sound effect for the victims being scanned by the scanner. This is good. This also goes hand in hand with the visual identifier that comes up at the bottom of the screen that says you are being hacked. So you'll now get a little audio cue inside your headset as well. Fix missing sounds for the AR scanner when the owner of ability is out of view. The scanner should now be able to spot targets above and below Pike. Sounds like a bit of a buff for the scanner. Maybe that's not something that we actually need, but maybe it was an intended feature at launch and it's now been enabled. Disable the usage of the scanner whilst inside vehicles. Not sure why you'd ever need to do that, but the fact it's been turned off is good. And fix the EMG X scanner's target found audio effect not working for targets beyond 20 meters. Again, I'd actually argue that that's not something that I would want in the game, but 
Again, maybe it was an intended feature for the specialist at the time, so they've enabled that now. Quite an important change coming to Sundance. They've moved Sundance's scatter grenade to detonate after the first bounce to allow victims the chance to move away if they are thrown at low altitude. So this means, like, if you're in a condensed space, I've done it quite a lot of times on Renewal when you get to that final objective in, in Breakthrough, you can throw grenades into some of those back rooms and there are like 10 people in there and the grenades go off really, really quickly after you throw them. And of course, the scatter grenade explodes into five more grenades. So it is a bit spammy and you can get quite a lot of kills with it. So the fact that there is now going to be another bounce to it before that explosion comes about, it's going to take a little bit longer for the detonation to happen. So you may not get as many kills as playing Sundance, but it's a better experience for the people who are trying to be killed by Sundance, which I would argue is definitely the way to go. And there's been some fixes to the wingsuit. Fixed an issue where the repair tool crosshair was visible when in the wingsuit. And also sometimes you could fly in first person view. And I don't think that was actually supposed to be a feature. So they've, they've disabled that. DICE has fixed an issue where a player driving the hovercraft couldn't be shot through the front window. I actually tried that the other day with the 50 cal sniper. And I could shoot the guy through the front window. Although it seems that on some... Some weapons you can do it and some you can't. I was able to do it with a 50 cal sniper, but I guess with a pistol, probably wasn't possible. That's now been fixed, which is good news. And there's been a fix here where the Apache Warchief and the Super Hokum 127mm anti-vehicle rocket packs no longer have blast impulse upon firing. That seems to be something that people were complaining about. I'm struggling to see something here where there's a mention about those issues where you're hit with a cannon and then you can't run properly as a soldier. No, it doesn't seem to be fixed in this system here, although it may be further down, so we'll have a look. There is a fix, however, or at least fix some of the issues that prevented visual hits from registering when firing on an enemy target. That seems to be the issue that Jack Frags highlighted with the hit registration. Note, further improvements are still being investigated, so it doesn't mean they fixed it completely. It means they've addressed it in this patch, which is good news. The AX scope having faster ADS time than other scopes, that's been fixed. Boo, sad times for being a sniper. Uh, fix the revolver chambering an extra bullet. It will now correctly reload five bullets instead of six. Oops, big mistake. <laughs> um, reduce the switch back to weapon delay after throwing a grenade. Thank you so much because that, I would throw a grenade and try and switch back to my primary weapon and sometimes it would cause your gun to fire if you clicked the fire button or if you tried to throw a grenade but you switch back too quickly. And sometimes I was literally, I'd have a sniper rifle in my hands and I'd click my mouse button and it would fire my sniper rifle like five times, but wouldn't actually fire any bullets, it would just play the audio. Just sounded really weird. So the fact that they've sort of reduced that switchback delay is a good thing. They've also fixed an issue here with the recoilless M5 and the Soflam, where it wouldn't lose the lock on to enemy air vehicles when the Soflam was doing it. So you could, could just continue, your M5 recoilless would just continue to hit the, the, the vehicle even though they'd flared. So that was something that really needed to be fixed. It was annoying a lot of pilots, so that's good to see. There are, of course, a bunch of other fixes in the patch notes. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can go and read them. It sounds like a good update, but I think there are still a few things that are quite concerning here. There doesn't appear to be a nerf to the M5C bolt at all. They've still got the 30mm cannon on top, which is the thing that is absolutely ruining infantry players' experience at the moment. The bolt is ridiculously overpowered with that 30mm cannon. I'm all in favour of vaulting the bolt until they can balance it properly or DICE just maybe turn off the 30mm cannon on top so people can't use it and then what you've got is actually a minigun with the bolt going super fast instead. The, the, the cannon on top's a bit too much. So there is more work to do here but DICE is definitely moving in the right direction and as of tomorrow we'll be able to play the update anyway. So thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.